I was just informed that my PSA uh, has increased. The doctor suggest a biopsy. How can help slow down the process? Two small spots may be cancerous. This is a great question, Moses. Now, when you have two small spots on your prostate, meaning they've looked at it, they've looked at it closely, and they are very clear that you have two new spots and you've seen an increase in your PSA, the only thing to do at this point is to get two opinions, right? Because we don't want to necessarily slow down the process because honestly, if it does happen to be a prostate cancer, it is something that we want to get treated as quickly as possible. So but what has to happen is you have to trust your doctor and you have to be very sure that their decision is right. Now, some less aggressive surgeons will say, well, why don't we keep an eye on it for a few months? repeat the CT scan and, and, and the PSA and see where we are. And some people, some patients will say, no, I'm, I want to see now, you know? And some people will say, no, doc, that's great. So what you want to do is find a surgeon who is on the same page as you and someone who takes a less conservative approach. And oftentimes you can find that information on the doctor's website or in reviews, speaking about the doctors, or by talking directly to someone who has had a scare with prostate cancer. The thing about prostate cancer is that if you live long enough, eventually everybody will get a small piece, a little tiny bit of prostate cancer there um, in, in modern times. And so prostate cancer is not like a, a, a overnight death sentence. It's actually just an alert sign as to all hands on deck, let's pay attention, let's know our options and, and where to go from here. And so I'm glad you asked this question because I think one of the things that we have to keep our, our, our brain on is that prostate symptoms are one thing, but we also want to think about what types of symptoms would be triggers that maybe we do have prostate cancer here and it's a time to rush off to the hospital. What I love about Moses's question is that Moses is, has seen the doctor. You've gone, you've talked to the doctor, they've given you their opinion. I always say too, that if you have a primary care physician, do not ever do what the specialist is recommending without following back up with your primary care physicians, particularly if you trust them, because then they can give you their idea as to what needs to happen. There were plenty of days where one of the, the specialists that I sent someone out to had one plan and I was like, I don't agree with that plan. Let's get them on the phone and talk to them about it. Right. And those types of dialogues are kind of what's starting to be missing in healthcare. But if you, establish a relationship with your physician and you trust them, then those types of conversations should always be present, right? So some of the more silent signs that a prostate cancer um, could be there, and you might not be aware of it. Now we know the outward prostate symptoms, right? Getting up in the middle of the night to urinate, that could be prostatitis, that could be BPH, that could be bladder. So that's not necessarily anything that we want to worry about. We just want to get it checked out. There's also rushing to the bathroom, have, having to, to just barely be able to hold it. But that isn't necessarily anything that should trigger, oh gosh, it, it might be prostate cancer. That just means we need to get it checked out because it could be prostate, it could be bladder, it could really be anything. But when we get to some of the symptoms like blood in your urine, that's not usually a sign of prostate cancer, but it's definitely something that needs to be checked out. But then... Let's talk about low back pain. You've had a low back pain that just started all of a sudden. It's, it's just there. It never really goes away. You need to get that checked out because that could potentially be a prostate cancer that has spread to the bone. Not only just lower back pain, but hip pain, shoulder pain, just new pain, you know, new pain in the bones because unexpected bone pain can be a sign of an un undiagnosed cancer. Another thing would be a fracture. So whenever you get a fracture of a bone and you weren't necessarily doing anything that should have fractured the bone, like for instance, you're walking down the street in some dress shoes and you actually um, twist, twist your ankle and it breaks, right? That isn't necessarily 
something that I would say should have happened. So that's a sign. Let's see. Let's look at the bones. Do we need to do a bone density scan? Could this be an undiagnosed cancer? So any unexpected bone pain or bone fracture would be a sign of a potential cancer there. Another thing is just all the unexplained fatigue, you know, just feeling tired, unexplained, that needs to get checked out, right? Another thing is weight loss. This is a big one. You've lost 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, but you weren't trying, didn't do anything differently. That needs to be evaluated. Could be your thyroid, could be an undiagnosed cancer, could be something else going on, but it needs to be evaluated. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people who lose weight, weren't really trying and just embrace it. They look good. You know, like I lost some weight. I'm looking fantastic, but there could be an underlying issue there that needs to be evaluated. Another thing is just unexplained swelling of the legs. Like, you you know, you've noticed you're sitting, your legs are swelling. Maybe sometimes when you're standing, your legs are swelling. It needs to be evaluated. It may not be an underlying cancer, but it could be even something going on in the heart. So you've got to get these things looked at. And then another one that we don't talk enough about are changes in the bowel habits. Maybe all of a sudden you're constipated. You used to be very regular. Now all of a sudden you're not. Maybe you used to be um, kind of constipated, but now you're having runny diarrhea all the time. Both of those need to be evaluated and could be an underlying undiagnosed condition, particularly a cancerous condition. So I wanted to have this topic because we talk a lot about, you know, prostate, um, benign prostatic hypertrophy, which is basically benign, which basically means nothing to worry about, no cancer here, and prostatic hypertrophy, which basically means the prostate is enlarged. And we talk about natural solutions on how to manage that and manage the symptoms around it. We talked about prostate, we talked about the prostate massage. We've talked about pumpkin seeds. We've talked about a variety of different supplements that have been shown to minimize symptoms and actually reduce the size. But what I want to start considering shifting the conversation to is a little bit more about what are some symptoms and signs that maybe there is something else underlying here? And I don't want to scare you. I don't want to give you anything that's like, oh my God, I may have prostate cancer. But what I do want you to be hyper vigilant about is that you are your own health detective and that you are the only purveyor of wellness that you've got. Like your mama can't do it, your your girlfriend can't do it, your boyfriend can't do it, your wife can't do it, your husband can't do it, your auntie can't do it. You're the only one who can 100% look out for your own best interest when it comes to your health. You don't want to snooze on it. So if you're having any of those symptoms that we just talked about, you need to get evaluated, not just because it could potentially be a prostate cancer, but it could be potentially any type of cancer or any type of underlying disease, right? And so being that I am a functional medicine provider, we like to get to the root cause of the issue and really start there. And what I also encourage you to do is that the more you become educated on some of these things, then the less distrustful you'll be of the healthcare system. And the more you'll start to trust your doctor because you guys can have peer-to-peer conversations and dialogue about this. You could take some of these studies that we talk about and bring them back to them and say, well, doc, what do you think about this study? What do you think about that? So that the doctor, instead of talking down to you, talks right to you in a, in a way where you both respect each other and you can make decisions about your health together instead of in a fragmented way. Okay. So um, I think that there is a big place for prostate biopsy. But I also think at the same time, you've got to be clear that you really need it. And oftentimes that clarity comes by getting two different opinions. Your insurance company will pay for two different opinions and try not to go with someone who's in the same practice as the guy or the girl who told you you need the biopsy in the first place. Okay.